Mike on the Gianna Volpe Report, brought to you by Montauk Beverage, Fine Ice Teas, and Lemonade, Maximus Health and Fitness in Riverhead, by Victor, P, uh, Victor Giannini, author of the book Counselor, by Village Overhead Door in Southhold, and by Michael Evans, author of The Real Matrix. So, uh, good morning again. Now, today is Gianna's, for those of you who don't know, today is Gianna's birthday. It's her birthday, and she's celebrating her birthday today, and Gianna's mama, who can really cook, by the way, is making her a homemade birthday cake. You're so full of it. What, that she can really cook, and she's making you a birthday cake? That she's making me a birthday cake. Oh. Well, she's tolerating she you did, for the day. I mean, you know. She sent me, she did send me the birthday cake emoji this morning. Oh. If I knew what? you were coming, I'd have baked the cake. So what did you get me? See, the silence is uncomfortable now. No, no, it's not uncomfortable. <laughs> I got you. I got you a diamond, a diamond friendship ring. Because nothing oh. is too good for my Gianna. Oh. I just have to take the liberty of it. <laughs> I think that's like genetic. I think it's because I'm a woman. Well, you know. But it, but... What the? Oh. No, just liking gemstones. Oh. But but um or I'm or I'm a dragon. Dragon's well, like treasure, right? I, I don't know. I do know I this that a kiss on a handle may be quite continental, but diamonds are a girl's best friend. Whether well, square shape or pear shape, those stones lose their don't lose their shape. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. Oh that's the song. Right? That's the song, yes. Okay. No, I was a poet and I didn't know it. So it's my birthday show, so I was like I get to talk about whatever I want this morning, and I'm going to, like, make it not even all about the East End, even, maybe. So, Wait a minute. To- Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Just hold the phone while I get the guest ready to go here. Oh, you didn't call him? No, I have me, so I'm sitting on bake, but I don't want people oh, to hear okay. the noise. Oh, okay. So, so Tommy Cop- Carpenter um, from Omega down in Clearwater Beach, I believe. Is that right, Tommy? That's right, Clearwater. Okay, so Tommy is a fourth-degree black belt in Taekwondo, a purple belt in Brazil Jiu-Jitsu, and is a semi-pro fighter with 16 years of martial arts experience. And I put me on because I was telling him, I actually let him listen to the show that we had when I got back from Florida, um, getting my certification as a clothes protection operator. Um, basically because we were talking about MMA fighting and Bruce was saying it's not like boxing is the sweet science. Um, that it's, it's um, just guys beating yeah, each other up. I'm sorry, let me cut you off. But, but there's a the quote goes, you know, if boxing is the sweet science and mixed martial arts is like quantum physics. Because there's just so many different things going on, you know? You have boxing, which is like, it's only concentrating on punching. Where you have MMA, concentrates on punching, sprawling, wrestling, judo, jiu-jitsu, kickboxing, taekwondo, it's everything. So there's just so many more things to it. You know, I respect boxing, but boxing is one aspect of MMA. Right. And that's what I thought was so... That's what I wanted wanted to... um, to talk to Bruce about so he can learn because to the untrained eye it just appears as though people are well, because that's what it is people beating each other up but right there is but there is um there's a method to the madness and in fact it's like it's many methods coming together which you know arguably makes it I, I just think that the sport is still so new that it's it's really misunderstood. I, I think they just legalized it in New York after, like, you know, I mean, it's been illegal since it started. Um, and I think part of the reason is, you know, political because it, it's it's swallowing boxing. You know, you guys right. like Janelle Whitaker, Floyd Mayweather, you, these guys, they're the last of their kind. You know, you're not going to see probably any more guys like that in boxing because they're already going over to MMA. So it's, wow. it's, just a, it's just getting swallowed up. You know, MMA is more, more exciting. Uh, it's, it's more efficient. I want to do both. 
Nothing. Right? I mean, and it's nothing against boxing. I mean, boxing is a great sport. You know, and, and a lot of guys that can't box in MMA get knocked out. But, oh, really? Yeah, but I'm, it's, MMA has so much more to it. Like, if you can't box, okay, well, you could be really good at something else, like taking the guy down or, you know. Is that, that's how Ronda Rousey does it, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, she was a you know Olympian in judo, you know, and, and she's she's beating up all these, you know, these these top level boxers. And then you get uh, Holly Holm, the girl that beat her for the title. She's a world class right. kickboxer. She's got no grappling skills, but she was she learned enough to stay away from Ronda Rousey, and she knocked her out. Wow. And so there's just so much different strategy. You know, that's why it's it's so much more uh, intricate. I feel like. I'm excited to to learn a martial art because I think that'll be better for me because as a boxer, like, I'm I'm tiny. Like, I feel like I don't, I won't, I do um, have the, is that true? Break, break it up on me a little bit there. Oh, Say that again. I'm saying, I'm saying I feel like it would be good for me to learn something like jujitsu or or oh, absolutely. because because as a boxer, I'm short and I have tiny arms, so my reach isn't going to be isn't going to be great. And, and and you can get around that. You know, there's a lot of short boxers, but it, it's nice to have something else. Like, oh, okay, well, this guy's got a really long reach. I'm going to take him down. You know, you put put a boxer on his back, and all his boxing goes out the window. You know, so they say, how uh, much? 80 to 90 how much of fights end up on the ground? So, I mean, you, you want to know at least something on the on the ground. How much of of this is studying your opponent before you get into the into the cage? That's that's a strategy. I mean, it definitely guys the guys definitely do it that are in the sport. But like when you do am, when you fight amateur, you, you don't get that that kind of privilege. So you just kind of kind of make sure you're good. You know kind of get all around you know a lot of times like you'll get an opponent you'll study him for you know three weeks and then the night of the fight they're like oh yeah by the way your opponent switched because this guy dropped out so we have to get you this guy oh my god really so i mean that's why it's amateur you know so Um, you probably shouldn't even think about your opponent too much at amateur because well i know for me if i was prepared for something and then it switched at the last minute that might that might mess me up. Yeah, getting prepared for your opponent is almost like a privilege of, of being a pro. Wow. So, um, tell talk a little bit about you. You just became you just now you own your studio that you started, and tell us a little bit about that story and what it's been like being at the helm of your own. You know. Yeah, I mean, I um, I started there when I was 15. Um, I'm 31 now. Uh, my my goal was always to you know try to open up another school or, or take that school over. So you know that now that it finally happened, that's kind of like uh, it's, it's 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 really cool. It's a cool feeling. And um, the owner, the former owner was or it is was well, the former owner is Lenny Bogardet. Wait, Bob Dennis. I went yeah, with he, um, um, somebody local. He, he did a lot of things that, uh, with that school too, which was just pretty like inspiring. You know, he, he didn't just do martial arts school. You know, he's always got like ten things going on. So he did. A, he had a magazine, national magazine. He started the, the MMA program. We started MMA pretty much right when it, right when it got like right when it came out. When when people before it was called MMA, it was called uh, NHP, no old bard, and um, you know, nobody really knew a whole lot about it. And it was it, back then when it first started, it was you know a lot more brutal. And, uh, <clears throat> and then it kind of turned into more of a sport. Um, so we were well, kind of there for that whole transition, which was pretty cool. What was there just less rules? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it was it was pretty crazy. I mean, when it first started, you could basically do anything except for poke the guy's eyes out and pull his hair. <laughs> you know, so but that, but and the thing about it was, you know, the UFC they, they sought after rules. They didn't run away from them. They weren't like, no, we don't want to do this. We don't want to do that. They wanted to make it more of a sport that people would accept. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of, you know, that's what they did. Oh, wow. And, and Lenny, yeah, Lenny, runs, I mean, Lenny runs IEP. 
International Executive Protection that certified me down in Florida. And Master Tommy actually taught me gun takeaway, um, like five different techniques for taking taking a gun out of someone's hand. Um, that was all. Yeah, you know, how, that, that, how, that's, a, that's definitely, like, the coolest part of it for me, you know, because it's the hand-to-hand stuff, and, you know, that's what I like, that's what I do. Um, but that's, like, probably the least important thing that you learn. Yeah. Oh, definitely, um, as far as the school is concerned. Although you do get a separate certificate for that. Yeah. Um, but how long have you have you been doing that? The... the uh, international executive protection. I, I've been doing it for about probably about ten years. Really? You know, yeah, and you know, you, the, the two different companies too. The, what the class you took is is one company, and then the actual company for you know security when he's when he's hiring people to do work is a, is a totally different company. Well, I hate to uh, I hate to interrupt this conversation, but we are grabbed by the clock. It's time to go. It's always now an issue. It's time to say goodbye to all our family. T I A N N A B O L P E. Oh, God help us. <laughs> Tommy, I- I'm sorry. I-, I-, I didn't mean for you to be exposed to that. I really didn't. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's okay. But uh, that's we nice. appreciate you being on. All right, Anthony. Thanks, guys, for having me. Thank yeah, you. Thanks, Tommy. All right. Bye. Sure. Bye, Bruce. An overhead door serves a purpose, and it should be as beautiful as the rest of your home or building. For more than 30 years, Village Overhead Doors has been creating and installing beautiful garage doors for contractors and homeowners on the north and south forks. They also install automatic garage door openers that open with the click of a remote, so there's no getting out of the car in bad weather. For a wide range of styles from lifetime steel doors to custom-made wood doors and for all your garage door needs, please call 765-4963 today and find out how your garage door can be a beautiful focal point of your home or building's exterior. Village Overhead Doors of South Hole, 765-4963. Make the call and let them add beauty and value to your home or business. Nothing goes with a day at the beach, playing sports, working in the yard, or just relaxing like a nice cold iced tea, and Montauk Beverage Works iced teas will quench that thirst on the hottest summer day. Whether it's iced citrus black tea, red berry hibiscus, white tea with peach, or half and half with lemonade, or their lemonade, Montauk Beverage Works iced teas and lemonade refresh you better than a glass of water down your back on a hot summer day. Montauk Beverage Iced Teas and Lemonade are all natural iced teas made with premium teas. Their sweetened teas use only cane sugar, and there are no artificial flavors or preservatives in their iced teas and lemonade. So get some Montauk Beverage Works Iced Teas and Lemonades. Let them get a chill in your refrigerator, and then when you're looking for something refreshing and good, open one up and enjoy it. Montauk Beverage Iced Teas and Lemonades are available at all four Blue Duck Bakery Cafe locations, and at finer stores throughout the East End.